ow, we almost forgot to finish off March in the way that March needs to be finished off. I know. By getting mad at each other. Urgh, I'm so mad. Urgh. 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 I have an intense dislike right now. Yeah. Exactly. That's how you know it's real. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, we have to, we have to, of course, do. It's March. We have our annual tradition of March Madness. Mm-hmm. I don't remember how many times we've done this so far. I don't know, like. This is our fifth, maybe. I was thinking four or five. Fifth time doing it. So yeah, there you go. We came up with a topic because we didn't have one last week. We did. Al basically threw this out here as like a goof, and I was like, let's do that. <laughs> <laughs> like, wait a minute. That's actually a good idea. I was That's like, a okay. pretty good one. <laughs> it took some editing to get down to where we are, but. Yeah, shout out to Al for basically putting together this character list. <laughs> Thank you. She did a good job, and then we whittled it down to our 64, and here we are. We have a bracket. And that's Yay. what we're going to do today here on episode, I forgot what episode number is, 274, 274 of the Season of Lambie Checkup OVA. It's a podcast where we have conversations about video games, anime, and manga. Hello, I'm Jared, joined as always by Doc Al and Ladium. Hello. And it's, it's, it's time for March Madness, and this year... We're looking at the Yakuza games, which, of course, you played. You didn't play through them, but you watched me play through all of those games last year. I played through seven. You played through seven, yes. But the rest of them you watched me play through, so we are both now adequately uh, caught, caught up. up and ready to rank the characters from the Yakuza series, which, uh, I guess, to, to clarify, we are only ranking characters from the Yakuza series games with the, with the name Yakuza in the title that released here, mm -hmm. <laughs> excluding Dead Souls. <laughs> Because that yeah. doesn't count. No, but like, we didn't zero put, through seven. We didn't put judgment and stuff in here. We we made a uh, executive decision. I was gonna say a judgment call as a joke. Oh, but... that, that was better. I'm sorry. I, I <laughs> walked right over your joke. <laughs> oh man, which reminds me, we have DLC coming out soon. Ooh. We do have DLC coming out soon. That'll be fun to play. That'll be very fun to play. Yes. Anyway, Yakuza. We have a bunch of Yakuza characters, a lot of main characters, because there's a lot of them in, throughout these games, unsurprisingly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then a wealth of side characters and goofy characters that we decided made the list. <laughs> yep. Because that would just make it more fun. Yep. So yes, uh, this bracket will be in the description of this podcast if you want to play along or follow along the bracket. And also, if you want to fill out your own bracket, you can do that as well and see who you think is your own personal Yakuza top character out of the 64 we picked. Mm -hmm. So there you go. That's the asterisk. Yes. Out of the 64 we picked. Yes. There's, there may be some people that are missing here because of, you know, we just had to cut people for space and also because, holy crap, there's a lot of characters in this series and so it's hard to remember them all. Mm -hmm. So there is that as well. I did my best. You did your best. That is true. Let's get down into the nitty gritty and just, you know, dive into this whole thing. We got the All first right. round, the round of 64 to get through, and that's mm -hmm. a lot of characters to get through. Some mm -hmm. of these are going to be pretty straightforward. Some of them are going to be a little bit more difficult, but we'll get to them and figure out a way to do this. We have also filled out our own brackets, which were pretty similar in retrospect, mm -hmm. but this is our collective bracket, so we will have some differences here and there, but also probably a lot of similarities here and there as well. Mm -hmm. So let's dive into this first round matchup. Okay. It is Yuta Usami from Yakuza 6 versus Osamu Kashiwagi from Yakuza 0 through 3 and 7. Mm -hmm. um, I went with Kashiwagi on this. I also went with Kashiwagi on this, partially because um, in is it 0, the Judgment Karaoke has him just like rocking out and on the keyboard just like, Yes. Super, super zen. I was like, I well, you can't, you can't top that, man. It's true. Yuta, if you had done karaoke, he you would have won a, this round. I mean, he would have had a much uh, better chance of winning. Yes, but um, Kashiwagi is a good character, and also I just think it's funny how he's just like inexplicably back in seven, and no, there's no, no reason for it. And it's great. And in judgment, uh, in lost judgment too. Oh, yes, 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 you're right. But he doesn't, but he doesn't say anything. Have speaking lines there. He's just there. <laughs> God, I'm, I'm really going to have to somehow find a way to read my own handwriting on this because I'm digitally writing all of these answers out. Oh, no. And it's not good. Oh, no. 
but we'll we'll figure it out. Uh, and up next, we have Tetsu Tachibana from Yakuza Zero versus Subasa Kurosawa from Yakuza Five. I went with Tachibana on this one. I went with Kurosawa on this one. Okay, I want to know why you picked Kurosawa. Uh, I thought Kurosawa was just a good slimy villain in Five. He's pretty that slimy. You don't really see coming, considering like how helpful he is in multiple character routes throughout the the early parts of that game, and then like once the twist happens, it's like, oh, 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 yikes, yikes, yikes. That is fair. Big, big oofs, oofs, the goofs going on there. <laughs> um, I like Tachibana in Zero. Um, I just thought Kurosawa's character was just more interesting and more impactful compared to him. Like, can, Personally, can we, can we make a joke about impactful with Tachibana since he like hey. got sledgehammered? Yeah, he did. Um, I mean, obviously, he had a huge influence on the series by. In retrospect, I guess, um, by being a whole part of the uh, the vacant lot section, mm-hmm. um, I just thought he was an interesting character. Yeah. Uh, he he was one who actually like had a disability that was like a visible disability that he was like not hindered by. Mm-hmm. That was kind of cool. Um, also, I won't even lie to you. I saw that like. The other part of the bracket was what it was. Is like, oh well, whoever gets here isn't gonna go any further. So, doesn't uh, yeah. really matter all that much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that I mean, that was kind of my reasoning as well. But also, like, yeah. Yep. So, um, who do we want to pick on here? I don't really care either way. I mean, I'm good either way. We both have our reasons. Um, I think for me, I just like when I looked at Tachibana in this bracket, I was like, there are more interesting zero characters for me. mm Hmm. Compared to him? Well, for this bracket, then, let's go with Kurosawa. All right. Well, he's not making it past Kashiwagi, but... He's not. So that's... That, like I said, it doesn't really matter all that much. Double Ks in this second round. I'm trying to write really well. Yep, that <laughs> definitely looks like Kurosawa, not like Kurogava. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, at least it's not my handwriting. I don't know. It might be about the same here. <laughs> I'm going to take a picture and send it to you real quick, and then you'll be able to to see how just great this looks. I mean, I could read most terrible handwriting. One, I'm, I've am i done, like, um, handwriting you are, stuff. You are a doctor, so you have to have bad handwriting. Exactly. Um, and also, I just had bad, had bad handwriting my entire life. Well, that sure is <laughs> writing. See, I told you. It's hard to write with a mouse, let's be real. It, it is hard to write with a mouse. So it looks like um, the, the weird like bracket thing that's like a parenthesis and then a parenthesis, but they're back-to-back instead of uh, <laughs> like actually parentheses. So yeah. it's that, V, V, a sideways C. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> yep, 100%. You did, you did your best. I did my best. Uh, up next... We have Ai Uihara from Yakuza 0 <laughs> <laughs> against Il Yujin from Yakuza 2 and 3 and 7. Um, Shouts out to Ai Uihara. Shouts out to Ai Uihara. Uh, not for the reason that many people would think. No, cl- no, for every reason. You know, She's helped a lot of people out in times of need. She um, definitely has helped people out in times of need. She was very funny in Yakuza 0, and now she gets to spend time cosplaying as VTubers and making cameo appearances on long VTuber streams. Fantastic. Yeah. Um, I personally went with I on this one just because oh, I yeah, same. funny. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> like, Ilya Jin is a very good character. I enjoy that he keeps coming back and he has, like, the whole, like, washed up Korean drama actor thing going for him. But I was like, Ayuhar is great. Yeah, exactly. Also, I- she's genuinely very enjoyable in Zero. I, I when I saw you put her on the list, I laughed like out loud. <laughs> I had to. Like I it said, was she was very funny. good in Zero. She was genuinely an enjoyable character. Yeah, totally. 
it, it's not just like because I think it's funny to put I, I, I her mean on, partially like, it, it is <laughs> but it is funny to put her on here <laughs> yes 100% <laughs> Uh, up next, we have Hiroki Awanu from Yakuza 0 and Saiko Mukuda from Yakuza 7. Um, I went with um, Saiko on this one. Hey. hey. I also went with Saiko on this one. Woo! Saiko was one of my favorite party members from 7 because she's just like no nonsense and is able to keep up with all the dudes and just keeps them in line instead of them just being raucous dudes. She's, she makes sure they're in their place and also is able to like snap back at them whenever it's possible. Yep. Um, Awano's good. He's a good villain in zero, but like out of that trio of dudes from the, the Dojima clan, like, he's the weakest. I would say he's probably maybe second. Really? Cause the other dude I think is the weakest, the one we cut. Oh right, right. That that's the one. Um, but he he's the weakest out of the ones that we picked. Yes, yes, yes. I would agree. Um, I just think that Psycho is a very fun character. Um, like you said, she's really able to like handle the boys mm-hmm. quite well. Um, and you know, it's it's pretty cool to have a uh, like playable lady character again. In Yakuza, even though I did it backwards and I knew that she was already there. Yeah. No, I, I completely agree. Yay! So there we go. Uh, Next, we have Yukio Terada from Yakuza 1 and 2 and Omelette from Yakuza 7. <laughs> <laughs> I know that, like, theoretically I should have picked Terada because we know way more about him, but I picked Omelette because <laughs> Omelette... <laughs> Omelette's a chicken that helps you run a multi-million dollar business. <laughs> I mean, that's fair, but... <laughs> like I said, that's what I picked. Yeah. Um, But I understand that, like, intellectually, Terada is a much better character yeah. than Omelette. <laughs> Um, and it's is an important character for the series. That that twist at the end of two is real good. It's real good. Because you really don't see it coming. <laughs> no, I had no idea. Mm-hmm. I had no idea. So, I mean, genuinely, Terada is the better character. I'm not going to lie on that. I just personally thought it was funny to pick Omelette. I, I think it is also very funny, but I think in the interest of... For the actual bracket, I say pick Terada. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I will not even lie on that one. Uh, up next, we have Kaoru Sayama from Yakuza 2 and 3, and Hana from Yakuza 4 and 5. Um, I went with Hana on this one. Me too. Uh, she's fantastic. She's great. She should be in more games. She really should. I mean, like, the the dynamic between her and Akiyama is just brilliant. It's so good. And she got to do karaoke. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I really like her, and she just, you know, deals with all the b- Yakuza, like, very, very well. Yes. She's fantastic. I love Hana. Um... I think Kaoru has a good has like a decent time in in two. Yeah. Not necessarily like as a character, she has a decent time, but like she is given in like an, an ample amount of screen time, and then she shows up for two seconds and three, and is like, "All right, see you later." Goodbye, and then she and like, like falls in love right. with an American cop. All right. <laughs> Goodbye. I guess. <laughs> so yeah, and and like you like you mentioned, Hana's great. She's so good. She's such a fun character. Give so, Hannah yeah. more more time in the Yakuza series. I dudes. agree. All right. Uh, up next, we have Ryuji Goda, and I do not remember how to pronounce his first name, but Chow from Yakuza 7. This one was hard because I like both of them a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, I went with Ryuji on this one. I did as well. Um, he is a very, very, very good character, and I felt like he was just like a perfect foil into. Mm-hmm. He was so well done. Yeah, there's a also, lot of like, like just his zero stuffs is funny. But yeah, anyway. there's a lot of good like character stuff that they are able to do with him into because like you don't really have you at at that point in time in the series because obviously it was still very new. You didn't mm-hmm. have that kind of foil to cure you. 
that was kind of like similar to him in the same vein and like could match him blow for blow essentially mm-hmm. um and you get that a lot with ryuji and two and just the way he's like characterization and like his um ideology is and everything like it's such a difference from like you know what nishiyama was in one and all that sort of right. stuff so a lot of just interesting dynamics that you get to experience with him and two um child's great as well like I feel like if this had been a different matchup, he would have gone much further. I me. completely agree. Because I genuinely think he is a fantastic character. He's really fun. Like, going from just, like, villainy to, hey, I was going to join you guys. And now I'm just <laughs> hanging out with y'all. Just going to hang out. Whatever, guys. What's I'll cook up? for you guys. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. Like, he's such a cool dude. Mm-hmm. I like 100%. him a lot. Yeah. And then he just shows up randomly and was it? Lost, Lost judgment. judgment, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey! Yeah, you're not was... talking either, but... That was a fun scene. It was very fun. But yeah, I think I think this was just an unfortunate matchup for him. Yeah, it's, it's one of those things where you're going to get a lot of unfortunate matchups in this. I was like, speaking of unfortunate matchups in the next one... <laughs> yeah, I know. This is, going, this is going to go one way, and we both yeah. know which way it is. Uh, we have <laughs> Koichi Adachi from Yakuza 7 and one Kazuma Kiryu from every game. And yep. I think it's pretty easy to to think here that like this is a very simple uh, win here, and that is of course for Adachi because he is just <laughs> so good. Um, I really enjoyed all his you know sneakiness, how he you know he's able to get back at the police at the end of Yakuza Seven, and just how he was able to help Ichiban throughout the game, just you know being a being a bro. Kiryu is just kind of just there. He's a side character throughout most of the game, so I mean, he's all right, but he doesn't really have a lot of characterization throughout them and everything. It just kind of shows up here and there on a whim, so you don't really get a whole lot of time with him, which is unfortunate because I think if you really fleshed out his character, you could have like just, just so much to do with this guy. But it's just a shame he doesn't show up that much, and you just kind of get him here and there, and like his fighting style is not that great. You know, it's just a shame. Real shame. In scene. Yes, thank you. <laughs> I wanted to make that goof. Yep. That I mean, it, it's it's just again an unfortunate matchup. Like Kiryu's got to be the one who wins this one. He just does. Absolutely, yeah. Um, like there's a lot that can be said about him, but I figure that we will talk about him a bit later. Since I mean, this one's kind of a a given at this point. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have Jungi Han from Yakuza 6. Very important clarification there. And yes. Pocket Circuit Fighter from Yakuza 0, 1, and 7. And 6. Oh, yes, and 6. Sorry. I, it's cut off on my end, so I don't. Ha- I forgot that he's also in 6. Mm-hmm. My, my, my label for him does not finish off. But yes, he's also in 6. Um, I went Pocket Circuit Fighter here just because this is the weaker Jungi Han of the Jungi Hans in the series. <laughs> Yo, I agree with you. I totally agree with you. I also went Pocket Circuit Fighter um, in this one because, again, this is the weaker Jungi Han. Um, and Pocket Circuit Fighter, he's a bro, man. He's a bro. He is such, he's a, such a bro. A, he's a good friend. He, he just he, wants to be happy. He wants to race his little the... Pocket Circuit cars. He's one of the, the Bakami Tai guys. It's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, he's just, he's good. Mm-hmm. He's very good. Um, I enjoy the fact that, like, they took this side character, like, in so many games. It just did a lot with him. Um, yeah. And, like, genuinely made him, like, friends with Kiryu at one point. And I was like, all right, I like this. And we never get a name for him. He has no name. He's just Pocket Circuit Fighter. <laughs> Yeah, it's great. But That's yeah, all you this, need. This was the weaker of the Jungi Han, so um, yeah. That that's that's the situation. Hmm. Uh, up next, we have Yuki from Zero and Kawami Two and Nugget from Zero. <laughs> what a matchup! <laughs> what a matchup! Uh, I I went with Yuki. I did as well. I like again. I think if this was a different s- matchup. Both of them could move on. Yeah. Yeah. For different reasons. But Yuki is just a fun, weird character that, you know, shows up in the Majima Cabaret Club stuff in Zero and then again yep. in the Kiryu Cabaret Club stuff in Kiwami 2. And mm-hmm. both times she's just great. And she's fantastic. The way they're able to, like, 
blend that story together between both of those games and have it make sense and then like her reunion with Majima and Kiwami 2 is so good because they just get back to being snippy at each other the entire time <laughs> yep. so much fun <laughs> It's so much fun, but also, like, we get some nice character growth from her, too. Like, she gets a lot more confidence. Mm -hmm. Um, Have confidence. No confidence. Um, No confidence. But, like, she she really was able to, like, come into her own there, and I'm I'm proud of her. I like that a lot. Yeah. Um, And and she's just fantastic. And, you know, all she wanted was to get some vinegar. (laughs) That's all she wanted. Uh, and Nugget's a good good chicken that you went in a bowling alley. Mm-hmm. I was very mad when I was playing the the Switch bowling, uh, Switch sports bowling, because I got I got a turkey and bowling. And I was like, "Where's my nugget? I want a nugget." <laughs> they just mail you a chicken. <laughs> cool. Oh man, that'd have been fun. It would have been fun. Uh, up next, we have Kazuki from Yakuza One through Four and Nick Ogata from Yakuza Seven. Um, Kazuki, for clarification, he is the owner of Stardust. Correct. Um, I went with Nick on this one. Huh. Um, Kazuki is a good character. I really like him. Um, but I had a lot of fun with Nick in Seven. Mm -hmm. Because he's kind of, he reminded me, um, somewhat of like Akiyama and the the way that he like behaves. Yeah. Um, and I appreciated that. He was also just kind of like over the top and silly, and I appreciate characters like that. Yeah. So, um, again, it was also one that I saw the next bracket, and I was like, mm, you're not going very far, but... I, yeah, I, I agree. <laughs> I, I, I think this is this is maybe one of the, the weaker matchups of this round. Yep. Um, I went with Kazuki, mm-hmm. but it was also kind of just a toss-up for me. I was just like... Like you said, like I looked at the next one, I was like, "Oh, well, it doesn't really matter here." Nope, nope. Um, so I think they're both good characters, but mm-hmm. uh, they're they're not like super duper highlights of this list. Yeah. Um. So who do we want to put down? You know, since since we went with my choice last time when we had a split, I'm gonna let you get this one. All we'll right, go so with Nick. That. Nick. Congrats. This is as far as you go, Nick. Yep. <laughs> sure is. Uh, up next, we have Haruka Sawamura from Yakuza 1 through 6 and Tsukasa Sagawa from Yakuza 0. This was legitimately the hardest choice for me in the first round. This one was not as hard for me, but I had a situation where I was like, oh, man. I, I I wish this was separated out into mm-hmm. different ones because, like, one of these is a very, very, very good character and deserves a lot of love, but um, a lot of love because he's just scummy. Yeah. Mainly. Um, like, he's so well-written, and he really, really drives a lot of the narrative in Zero. But I was just like, Hark is great. Mm-hmm. Hark is so great. Like speaking of driving narrative, yeah, like she she's like the big motivation for a lot of the series. But not only is she motivation, like she has her own arcs and her own personality, and like she has her own responsibilities, and uh, then becomes playable in five. Yes. Um. And, and I really just appreciated Haruka as as a character generally. Um. Because you have this, like, foil to this dirty, grungy Yakuza life. And then you have, like, this this child that you have to also deal with who is really driving motivation for out a lot of the series mm-hmm. to, like, do better and get away from this kind of life. But you keep getting drawn back in anyway. Yeah. So you have to have this like balance of like how do I how do I deal with both of these things that I really really care about. Mm-hmm. Um, but again, Hark is not just like a plot device, which she could easily have been a plot device, easily. She's 
really a, a good character and like even stands up to Kiryu a lot, mm-hmm. which is wild for like a a small girl to be like, no, what are you doing? <laughs> uh, like, I he's 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 kind of a scary guy, but she's like, no, that's 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 my uncle. He's fine. So I I appreciate her. I like her quite a lot. Um, and and as I mentioned, Saga was a really really good character, and he's really good because of how scummy he is. A hundred percent. He is so well written. He is probably the most memorable original character from that game. A hundred percent. And um, like he. He's somebody that like I en- I enjoy the scenes with him even though like I don't like him. Yeah. But he's structured in a way that you're like, okay, huh, you're back. How do I feel about you? <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So it it was it was tough, but also I like I had a moment of, oh, this is an unfortunate matchup. Okay, I know who I'm going with. Yeah. Um I went with Sagawa, but just, like, by the slimmest of margins. Because, like I said, this was literally the hardest matchup for me to pick from. Because mm-hmm. everything you laid out there is, is 100% true. Like, they are both really, really good characters. And they both have, like, so many positives in their own individual ways that it's just, it's incredibly difficult to choose between the two of them. And Haruka does have the benefit of she's at a lot more games. Yeah. So she has a lot more time to like grow into her own and get more screen time. Mm-hmm. Um, that helps. <laughs> but um and also like we again, like in a in a retrospective way, we like see how Sagawa um influences Majima mm-hmm. and who he is and becomes. Yep. Um and obviously, like, that's not a minor thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, I don't know, he was like, he was like your scummy uncle that, he was <laughs> like, am I the only one that has scummy uncles? <laughs> uh, I mean, I don't think any of mine are scummy, at least the ones I know, or at least okay. I, the ones I interact with. <laughs> okay, well, he he's like my scummy uncles, and I'm like... But, I mean, I've heard about some of your uncles, though. So. It's like, ah, oh, you know, you do some interesting things, but you're you're pretty garbage. But you would be an interesting character in like a novel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like that. That's basically him. Mm-hmm. Um. Also, just as a side note, um, Hark is a magical girl. True. So. And an idol. And an idol. Both pluses in her in her column true so 100 percent. i am i'm okay with giving it to haruka here okay from the you know the what you've said and everything but like, i just want to i just want to make mention again god this matchup was tough <laughs> <laughs> like this was the i think this was like one of the first like big kind of splits between our brackets mm-hmm. but again it's just man this that was such a tough matchup because they're such both good, good, good characters. The next matchup is one that I had a very hard time with. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, up next, we have Ryo Aoki from Yakuza 7 and Makoto Date from Yakuza 1 through 7. I had a very hard time with this one. Mm-hmm. I went back and forth a lot. Um. And it's wild because I didn't expect it when I saw it. I was like, oh, duh. Like, I'm going to go with Date. And then I was thinking about it. I was like, actually, Aoki's like a really, really good character. And I was thinking about, like, that ending scene. Mm-hmm. Like, from from the part where you're, like, in the top of the building to the lockers. Like, just it's that all real entire good thing. stuff. So beautiful. Yeah. Um, Date is obviously our, our bro. Mm-hmm. He's He's the one cop that we're okay with when he's a cop. Well, besides Adachi, but he's not technically a cop anymore. Um, he drives lots of helicopters. He does pilots. drive lots of helicopters and just at the very nick of time at the end of the game. Mm-hmm. Just to say, hey, what's up? Or I see you. 
<laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> he uh, he's a terrible babysitter. Yeah. It's a terrible babysitter. He's like, hey Haruka, you want to come to some like intense Yakuza moments with me in my helicopter? Yay! So, there's that. Where he runs a bar sometimes. He does. He does run a bar sometimes. He gets the lady. He does get the lady. She doesn't even get a name, but he gets the lady. He does get the lady at the end. Um, I like. I think this is it's, this is similar to the 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 last matchup we had, where again both char- both good characters. One has obviously more tenure than the mm-hmm. other. Yep. Um, I went the opposite route that you did. Here I went with Date. Um. I think for our bracket, we should go with Date. Yeah, like he just has so many good moments, um, you know, helping out Kiryu and the rest of the gang that shows up. That he just kind of that Kiryu drags into <laughs> Kamarocho at some point. He's like, mm-hmm. "All right, I guess you're a new friend now." Um, I think one of the strongest Date moments though is that end scene in six, mm-hmm. where he's um having the chat with Akiyama. Yes about like the fate of Kiryu mm-hmm. and everything and like I think that's like that stuff is so well delivered and everything mm-hmm. that like that's a that's a real good strong point on on his side for this and everything but yeah I think for the purposes of our bracket it probably should be Date if I can manage to write it well okay it's kind of it looks it looks like doot <laughs> but it's all right <laughs> we'll go with that Doy the Rock Johnson Doy the Rock Johnson uh, up next, we have Akira Nishikiyama from Yakuza 0 and 1 and Toro Hirose from Yakuza 6. This one was easy for me. Really? Yes. Interesting. Um, I went with Hirose. I mean, it is Beat Takeshi. You're not wrong. It's Beat Takeshi! <laughs> but also, just like genuinely, that character was so fascinating. Mm-hmm. Like he was so well written and well acted, and I like genuinely felt for him the whole time. Like, oh, mm-hmm. he's so good. <laughs> um, Nishiki has moments where I feel that, and like I, 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 I get the like bro moments. Um, I think his strongest moment is the one with the car. Where mm-hmm. he takes Kiryu out, I think that that's easily one of his strongest moments. Like all of his strong moments come from Zero. Correct. So they're like retroactively added in, and it makes one stronger by doing that. But he's not necessarily um, like a better character in one. Like he's kind of there. Yeah, he's just kind of like one-dimensional in one. Like. Mm-hmm. 95% of his character development came from zero. Yeah. And he's good there. I'm not going to deny that. But how did you do on this one? What did what did you do? I went with Nishiki. Did you? Mostly on the, off the strength of his stuff in zero. Okay. Because, you know, he does that bro stuff. Like, do you remember that time when him and... Kiryu are gonna fight through the streets and they both take off their shirts together and it's like this is so cool yeah I do remember that that part's real cool it is real cool there's just there's a lot of good moments of Nishiki I think in Zero and like that really help propel him mm-hmm. later on even though like the like I said the one stuff is not that great unfortunately no and even Kawami went like didn't yeah didn't give him enough after Zero yeah like, he's How, a much better character in Zero. Yeah. Uh, I can see giving this to Beat Takeshi just because it is Beat Takeshi, and God, Beat Takeshi is very good into stuff. Very, very good. I know it's very shocking, but hey, Beat Takeshi is very good. Also, he gets to participate in the baby rugby. Yeah, fair. <laughs> you could have just opened with that, and I would have been like, all right, let's go with that. <laughs> He made a Yuta like hustle to get there. He's like, "You better make it, kid." Gonna eat this baby. You better do it. You better get it. But I don't know. He just plays that like unassuming bad guy. Unassuming bad guy, but also like 
friendly patriarch Mm -hmm. role like he obviously cares a lot about the people who are under him and he plays that like um surrogate dad type character for them 100 percent. and you really don't see it coming with him but even after like the big twist with with um here say you're like oh okay wow and like i never felt like he was really hokey or anything even mm-hmm. though like that that entire plot twist could easily be hokey yeah um and that might be part of the strength of like he's acted by beat Tageshi. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I was just so impressed by this character that I was just like, like, he's super good. Yeah, I agree. So what do we do? I, I already, I already filled it in. So. Oh, okay. So you, you went with uh, Hirose? No, I went with Nishiki. So good. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Hirose, moving on. Uh, uh, all right. Up next, we have Mirei Park from Yakuza Five and Rikia Shima. Bukuro from Yakuza 3. Um, I, I went with Rikia on this one. I also did as well. Um, he, he's just, he's so good. He's, I mean, it helps he is there longer. <laughs> he is there longer. Um, he's, he's like the, the new kid on the block type thing that mm-hmm. he like really looks up to cure you and you, you get this like, you're going to go places, kid, kind of vibe off of him. And, you know, you get the whole tragedy of like, oh, you know, I'm going to get the tattoo filled in. And um, he's, he's so good. He's so good. Mm-hmm. Um, I think the stuff with Park is fine, but it does get a little convoluted near the end. Um, That's an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> um. Who? Uh, yeah. The the whole like Majima marriage thing feels so heavy handed and like strange. And mm-hmm. I feel like it would have been a much stronger scenario with her if they had left that out. Yeah, because it's never mentioned again. No, it felt very shoehorned. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh hey, we have to bring Majima in here somehow. Uh, here we go. And. I mean, one, it, 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 it makes him look like a mega creeper because um, she's like 18. But um, two, it like I said, it just felt fake. Yeah. And like we didn't get anything really sympathetic or interesting with her until like basically she's dead. Yeah. Um, whereas like Rikia, we really had time to get to know him and like him before he died. Mm-hmm. Um, also, you know, just as a side note, um, because Yuta got thrown out pretty early, this is the second chance for Tatsuya Fujiwara to, to move forward as a (laughs) voice actor. It's true. It's true. Because he also voiced Rikia. Yeah. Uh, (laughs) so yay. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I don't know. He was just like that, that spunky kid that you, you, you can see like, how excited he is about the this lifestyle but then like the whole time there's there's a lot of like warning behind him of like hey maybe don't do this and then you know he 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 plays the hero and doesn't end well for him but it also leads to like a really good moment with kiryu because kiryu like breaks down yeah 100 percent. and i think this is the first time that we see that really like that emotionally, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Like he loses it. Which I've mentioned many times in our Yakuza podcast, like the fact that they put in this like beefy, manly dude, like actually showing emotions and crying and like caring about people. Just A plus. A A plus 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 plus. Enrique led to a very, very good moment of that. So, yeah. um, thanks for dying, I guess. But like, I was kind of <laughs> sad about it because you're a good guy. Thanks for dying. <laughs> Much appreciated. You know. You know. You know. So yeah, Ricky moves on. Yay! Good job. Up next, we got Joji Kazuma versus Yoshitake Mine, both from Yakuza Three. Um, Mine is the main villain of Three, and 
Joji is Kazuma's twin, twin brother, brother who works with the U.S. government and is an assassin and also just says, beautiful eyes to beautiful Kiryu. Beautiful eyes. And that's why he's moving on. Exactly. I mean, they both have silly English lines in this. Um, but come on, you can't be beautiful, beautiful eyes. Beautiful eyes. You can't. And, like, the fact that he's, like, in the CIA and has, like, a super <laughs> fancy plane and shit, like... Come on. It's real dumb. Come on. It's fantastic. I love it. Oh, what, a, man. what a good scenario that entire thing was. Yep. Ugh. All right. We are halfway through the first round now. Woohoo. Up next, we have Futoshi Shimano from Yakuza 0 through 2 and Song Wee from Yakuza 7. I want to know who you went with on here. I went with Song Wee. <laughs> okay. I went the opposite direction. Oh. <gasps> Um, I think that both of them are very good characters, and I think that either choice here is valid. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is another one that I was like, oh, I see the next one. It doesn't matter. Yeah, fair, fair. <laughs> um, I think for me, the thing is like Shimano doesn't just doesn't show up a lot. Mm-hmm. He kind of is just there at times, and like he does interesting things. Yeah, throughout all those games, but he's just like there. <laughs> Is the only yeah. way to say it. Like he just kind of shows up and then we'll just be gone for a good chunk of the game and then we'll show back up and do something else. He is menacing. Yeah, he's menacing. True. Um Song Wee's just cool. She's very cool. I was very sad when they didn't let her join your party and they were, they teased that you she was going to. Yeah. I was like, oh, but she's real cool. She is real cool. And the fact that she like is basically one of the like head honchos of that area. Mm-hmm. Like have a bad lady leader like heck yeah yeah that's awesome Mm -hmm. and her like tiny ass mini skirt Mm -hmm. purple hair Mm -hmm. um (laughs) i i i I think for this bracket song hui is is the the appropriate choice all righty this next one is is who 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 Yes, up next we have Ichiban Kasuga from Yakuza 7 and Daigo Dojima from Yakuza 2 through 7. Mm-hmm. <sighs> this one. I had to sit there for a bit and think about this. Remember when Daigo shows up in Yakuza 5 and glasses and a surgical mask and people are like, I can't believe you're Daigo! <laughs> yeah, yeah. And it's very obviously Daigo. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Remember when Daigo shows up in his puffy jacket? Oh. <laughs> I mean, how many times did we make puffy jacket jokes throughout our playthroughs of Yakuza games? To it be was fair? brilliant. It was brilliant. Like, the whole time Daigo was just, like, thinking about that puffy jacket. He wanted to go back to that life. He wanted to go back to that life. He, like, somehow, like, comes out of a coma and shoots people. Like, cool, I guess. He's like, puffy jacket. <laughs> I had dreams of you. I have to live for the puffy jacket. Uh, who did you end up going with in this one? I went with Ichiban. I did too. Nice, did you? Yeah. <laughs> um, Daigo is a very good character, and I will not deny that. Mm-hmm. I can't deny that, because Daigo is amazing. Um, partially because of his... Puffy I like jacket. it. Yes. <laughs> um, I like that he is... He has weak moments. He has very distinctly weak moments, and like he, because of that, um, we're able to get like a Kiryu Daigo dynamic that ends up leading to like the big moment in six there. That I'm still mad that that letter was to Daigo, but <laughs> um, I'm still salty about that. Um, but Daigo, like, he's not a perfect leader, he will never be a perfect leader, he has no idea what he's doing a lot of the time. Um, he just wants his puffy jacket. He just wants his puffy jacket. No one will give him one. He's kind of like thrown into this life. I guess we should have said he was in zero too. I forgot about that. Hey, he um, is in zero technically, yeah. Um, um, but yeah, you're right. He's like, I mean, he's the son of a very prominent Yakuza family leader who then gets thrown into like, oh, our, the clan's in turmoil. We need to bring you in to lead the entire clan. Yeah. And you have no experience with this, but we're going to do it anyways. And you're basically like a kid. He's like mm-hmm. in his 20s, right? Yeah. Um, That's why he's out with so, his puffy jacket and getting right, the, right. hanging out with the bars. 
and it, with his giant like cross necklace. Um, <laughs> like like he's his Vin he's, Diesel Fast and Furious cross ne- necklace. He's not ready for this, and they kind of throw him into it. And I think that that leads to a really fascinating situation. That that I I. I've mentioned it before, and I'll mention it again. I, I like when characters have weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Um, and so Daigo is very, very good at that. Like, he's he's a good character. I like him a lot. Um, that being said, as you did, I went with Ichiban, because Ichiban... Is a himbo. He is a himbo. He is a big old himbo. Um, and, like... In retrospect, I knew more about Seven before I did anything else. But, like, I played Seven, like, we went through all the Yakuza games. So I was like, Kiri would have been a very, very hard protagonist to follow. Yeah. Very hard. And I think that Ichiban is fantastic for that. Mm-hmm. And I think part of that is because, in, in the same vein, Ichiban is not strong enough to be by himself. Mm-hmm. And we get the like Dragon Quest dynamic of his his team members, um, and I like that. I like that he is really dependent on people that he cares about, and I also like how much that like he feels. Um, once again, I'll bring it up. That scene by the lockers. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Oh my god, that is like one of the most heartbreaking scenes and it's so beautifully like acted, it's so beautifully done. Um god, it's fantastic. Also Ichiban's just like a goof dude and I like him. I like his stupid hair. Um I like his obsession with JRPGs. Uh I I I just like how like he doesn't take himself as seriously in the narrative as mm-hmm. Kiryu does. Yeah. And I think that that was a, a nice way to go because if you just did like a carbon copy of Kiryu for the next protagonist, it would have been boring. 100%. Um, and Ichiban is anything but boring. Like he is fantastic. Also, you know, we have those great Ichiban commercials when he <laughs> when he does the the candy thing. Yeah. It's great. Oh, man. He's a good guy. He is. I can't wait to get more with him. Same. What was same, your same, reasoning? Same. Just curious. Um, I think it was kind of just like how you, you put it. I just liked Ichiban like a little bit better. He's just such a fun character. Um, and like you said, how they were able to kind of create this new protagonist out of the, the shadow of Kiryu and make it so it's something pretty different, but also maintaining the spirit and, you know, the the vibe of Yakuza of like, you know, an empathetic protagonist, but in a different way from Kiryu, yep. where it's just not just, I'm macho tough guy, which I mean, that's, that's a very bland way to describe Kiryu, but like he is, you it know, is. silent tough guy essentially where Ichiban is more, I'm going to wear my emotions on my sleeve and be more outwardly to people and all that sort of stuff. Um, creates this, like this interesting di- dynamic between how you would look at both of those protagonists, but, they're able to both exist in this universe and make sense and also carry their own individual games and it makes sense. Mm -hmm. Um, And Daigo, like we said, is a very interesting character through all the stuff he goes through from, you know, getting plucked from his puffy jacket to leading the Tojo clan to becoming the catalyst for the next like four games where it's, Hey, Kiryu, something's wrong with the Tojo clan and Daigo better come back. (laughs) Yep. Yep. To eventually in seven, basically being like, I'm kind of done with this stuff. Hey, you want to just stop doing Yakuza stuff? That'd be cool, right? And, and they're like, all right, cool, let's do that. Yep. It's real wild, but yeah, Ichiban's real good. Real good. Um, also worth mentioning, the the Daigo sticker that I got you for Christmas is still one of my favorite things. It's true. I'm going to look at life. it right now. Look, nice. at that, look at that huge puffy jacket on him. <laughs> it's so good. It's just like a comically huge puffy jacket sticker that I got. <laughs> it is. It's fantastic. <laughs> I saw that. And I was like, I have to get that. There's no way I can't get you that. It's the perfect encapsulation of our Yakuza experience together. Yay! So there you go. Uh, up next, we have Sohei Dojima, speaking of the Dojimas, coming back yep. from yep. Yakuza 0 through 2, and Shun Akiyama from Yakuza 4 through 6. Um, this was easy for me. Yeah, it's Akiyama. Easy. It's Akiyama. Easy. 
Um, the elder Dojima is okay as a character. Yeah. I just don't think we get enough with him. Yeah, I mean, the most we get out of him, like, is, is from Zero, because that's where he's yeah. most of a character. I mean, in one, he dies immediately. In two, you yep. only see him through flashbacks. Yeah. Um, but you do see a lot of him in Zero, but, like, even then, he's just, like, he's an okay character. He's fine. He's and fine. especially, like, in a matchup with Akiyama, who is so good. Mm -hmm. Speaking of characters that, again, are, like, a new protagonist that has to be very different from Kiryu, mm -hmm. like, Akiyama fits that to a T as well. Yes, he does. I, I I think we'll probably talk about him a bit in, in the future. Yeah. Um, because this one was such an easy matchup, but mm -hmm. like, God, Aki, I was good. Yes. Uh, up next we have Win Hai Lee from Yakuza Zero and Jiro Kawara from Yakuza Two. <laughs> um. um Kind, again, a kind of a nothing matchup because again, it's going to go up against Akiyama, and that neither of these guys stand a chance. Correct. Um, who did you end up going for going with with this one? I went with Win Hai Lee. I went with Kawara. I don't know why. I couldn't tell you a reason why, but I did. <laughs> um, they're both interesting characters in their they own, are in their own rights. Um, they obviously are very different from each other, but I think they do have their own. They're they're very good in their individual arcs within those games. Mm -hmm. but like we like i said earlier like it doesn't really matter who goes on from this one no nope. be real it does not because akiyama is there and like oof. um i just genuinely enjoyed win highly and his mm -hmm. like protectiveness of, of the the gals that he worked with and yeah um i thought that like his influence on majima was was a pretty interesting thing because he's a very different kind of guy than majima mm-hmm um, but obviously we end up seeing like how he impacts his like final personality. Um, I say final in quotation marks, um, but you can't see my fingers doing the quotation marks. So I have to clarify. Um, but yeah, I, I just, I thought he was a real cool dude in general. Um, also he's just like hilariously beefy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Hilariously beefy massage therapist. Exactly. Like, that. that's just funny to me for some reason. I don't know why, but it's super funny. That's fair. Um, Kawara is also very, very good. Um, mm -hmm. So I, I could go either way. And again, it doesn't really matter because they go up against Akiyama and they can't win. I think for the, the sake of our bracket, I think Lee would probably be the better character to go forward. All right. Good job, Win Hai Lee. That's yeah. probably the best looking writing I've done for this bracket because it's just three letters. Yay! So there you go. Up next, we have Nancy Chan from Yakuza Zero <laughs> and Makoto Makimura from Yakuza Two Zero and Two. Um, Nancy Chan is from Seven. What did I say? Zero. Oh, sorry. I read Zero down below. Yes, Yakuza Seven. You're right. Um, There's a lot of people, a lot of characters, a lot of games. Nancy is the the like crawfish. Yes. Uh. Again, I, I I put it in there thinking like, haha, that's funny. And then it, she, Nancy got put up against Makoto. I was like, oh well, pff, sorry, Nancy. See ya. <laughs> Goodbye. Like that one's a pretty easy matchup. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's um, Makoto all the way. Yeah, Makoto's such a good character, and um, you were aware of this, and I mentioned this on on the on the um podcast where we talked about this, but like. Oh boy, when you get the Kiwami 2 stuff with Makoto, I was like a mess. Mm -hmm. It was so good. Like the karaoke song that Majima does in that. Oh. I remember um, being so excited to show you the trailer for 2 because I knew that stuff makes an appearance in there. Mm -hmm. Of like the initial like um, scene where Majima goes, gets the massage and she comes in. Yep. And I remember you freaking out as soon as that happened. I freaked out out um i just i love their dynamic i think mm -hmm. that even by herself makoto is a very interesting character um i mean despite the fact that she's like never a fighting character or anything she's a really strong woman mm -hmm. um and has been through a lot and um is is really like driven and ready but like her her dynamic with majima is just so so good um and yeah, Kwame too is out here trying to break my heart. <laughs> and she gets a good send off, you know, for being she does. A, a character that was introduced after, well, after the series has been made and everything. And 
was able to kind of get rewritten into two and all that sort of stuff and gets a really nice proper send off that you know is able to tie a bow on her and Majima's story together that I think works really well. Yeah, him, him uh, or her opening the the box with the wrist strap or the watch band uh, mm-hmm. on the airplane, like, oh, beautiful! <laughs> it's beautiful. Yep, I love it. I agree. Um, but yeah, she's obviously moving on. Yeah. Up next, we have Yuya from Yakuza One through Six and Master Rosera from Yakuza Zero and One. I went with Yuya because he's a bro. Uh, I'm gonna double check. Yes, I also did the same. Yay, Yuya. He's good. He's, he's a, a he's good a good boy. dumb boy. He is such a dumb boy and I love him to pieces. Like he is a good, good dude and he is ready to help you. Well, once he stops wanting to fight you. Yes. Then he wants to help you. <laughs> and then it starts randomly showing up in weird places when he's not working at Stardust or just he'll you go back to Kamarocho and he's the first person to greet you because he'll just be out that side of Stardust and be like, oh, yeah. you, you're back. <gasps> you're back. Hi, buddy. Hey, <laughs> Like, what I a love guy. him. What a guy. He's so friendly. He's a good dude. I mean, I mean, he is like a, a host, but still friendly, good dude. Mm-hmm. Also will throw down for you, and I appreciate that. True. He He's not afraid to f- some people up. No. Sorry, Sarah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is what it is. Your favorite phrase. Yep. Blech. Uh, up next, we have Taiga Seijima from Yakuza 4 through 7 and Dais- Daisuku Kuze from Yakuza 0. I'm genuinely curious what you went with on this one. I went with Kuze. I also went with Kuze. Kuze is... Holy God, what a bad guy. <laughs> what a bad dude. Like, he just keeps popping up. and he- Genuinely one of like my favorite villains in Zero. He is so good. Because he's so terrible. Mm-hmm. Oh man, Kuze. Like you just have all those fights with him, and he's just a complete turd the entire time. And yep. then by the end of it, he finally starts getting respect for Kiryu, and it's just like, oh yeah, this is that good stuff. Yep, yep. Um, Saijima is also a good character. Like, let's not be wrong about that or anything. But no. I think if you look at, like, the main four Yakuza 1 through 6 protagonists of Kiryu, Majima, Akiyama, and Saijima, he's mm-hmm. probably the weakest out of that four of that group of four. I would 100% agree with you. And, like, mm-hmm. how many times that's got to break out of jail? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. Uh, but, yeah, Kuze rules. Kuze rules. God. I remember escaping through the sewers, and then he shows up on a motorcycle. With a pipe? <laughs> With a pipe. Oh, Kuze That rules. entire scene's beautiful. Like, it's fantastic. And that's mm-hmm. what I was thinking when I picked him. I was like, you can't really beat a motorcycle in the sewers with a metal pipe. You really mm-hmm. can't. Like, he's a scumbag, and I love him. Mm-hmm. It's real good. Uh, up next, we have Nishida from Yakuza 2 through 3 and Yakuza 5 and Mr. Libido from Yakuza 0. <laughs> um, Nishida is the, like, Majima's kind of right-hand man in the Majima family in 2 yeah. and 3 when they're doing the construction stuff. And also, he shows up in 5, I think, briefly. Yep. Um, and then Mr. Libido is just a real f***er. He's a f***er. <laughs> One of my favorite Yakuza characters is Mr. Libido. What a guy. That that man knows what he wants, and he is out there to get it. You do it. Good for him. Good for him. Just doing his little dance. Doing his little dance. (laughs) And his sneakers. (laughs) He, like, teaches Majima how to do the dance. and wants to talk about cranking it. He wants to talk about cranking it and, like, some, some porn videos. And, you know, he's just, you get introduced to him in, in the back of one of the clubs, and he's just like, Pelvic just thrusting just in the back, like at the stairwell. And Majima's stairwell. just like, what on earth is that? <laughs> so like, what kind of club is this? <laughs> oh, man. What a guy. He's so powerful. If they He's... had brought Mr. Libido back, we, we could not have contained his power. No. I the... hope that this man goes out cranking it. I hope that's they're... how he lives his life. They're waiting for the PlayStation 6 to be able to bring him back because that's how much power they're going to need to capture the essence of Mr. Lupido. It's true. In a that, man, that man's too powerful. Too much. Too powerful. What a dude. 
Uh, up next, we have Yunanba from Yakuza 7 and Masami Arakawa from Yakuza 7. I assume we're going Mr. Libido on that, by the way. Oh, yeah, right? 100%. Of course. Okay. What do you, who do you mean? <laughs> Just checking. Um, I went with Arakawa on this next one. Did you? Yeah, I I think the problem with Namba is he has that like middle section of his story where he's just a butthole. Yeah. And just like unwilling to listen to rhyme or reason, and just like, what are you doing, dude? Like, what is wrong with you? <laughs> Stop being a that's, butthole. That's fair. I didn't really think about that. I was just thinking more about like I I appreciated his uh his backstory and his broness. I think, um, I, but like, Arakawa, I think, also has, like, a really interesting story between, like, you know, him bringing up Ichiban through the ranks of the Yakuza because he felt bad for him and all that sort of stuff, and then having to betray him and mm-hmm. move to the Omi and just, like, how he hated having to do that and keep that act up, all the while also scheming with Daigo and everyone to bring about the end to this big Yakuza war and all that sort of stuff, just... There's a lot of interesting dynamics with his character and everything and, like, how Ichiban has to confront that, you know, feeling like, oh, like, this my father figure betrayed me and everything. But it's like, oh, just kidding. It didn't really happen that way, but I couldn't really tell you this for years and years. And, oh, it's a real mess. Oh, boy. Um, Do you want to know something else that's great about Arakawa? What's that? He has three voice actors. Yes. Um, <laughs> George Takei is yep. his main one. Yep. Holy <laughs> Um, JYB is one of his voice actors. Nice. Holy And then Zach Allegar is one of his voice actors. Like, that is an insane lineup of characters, or not characters, voice actors playing this one character. Insane lineup. Mm-hmm. Um, I honestly will concede on this, Arakawa should go forward. Mm-hmm. He's a good character. He is. Yonk. Yonk. All right, up next we have Tatsubo Shinada from Yakuza 5 and Jungi Han from Yakuza 7. The good Jungi Han. The better Jungi Han. Okay, that's true. The better Jungi Han. I like Shinada in, in, in 5. He's a dumb baseball player who he's decides so he, he's going to write porn articles. <laughs> yeah, he's so horny. He's very dumb. I like He has a good story. Like Obviously, he does not show up past 5 because he's in right. there to make the Daigo connection and for Daigo to have a reason to come back. Mm-hmm. But I think he's a fun dude. He is fun. Um, Jungi Han's just a weirdo. <laughs> I really enjoyed Jungi Han in seven. Like, obviously um, when I first saw him, I had not gone through all the rest of them. I was like, Oh, he looks like T.O.P. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I just called him T.O.P. this whole time. Like uh-huh. legitimately, I'm pretty sure that there is art, like not artwork. There's um, a photo shoot of T.O.P. Like looking almost exactly like that. Unsurprisingly. Um, and um, also uh, uh, Psycho at one point, he was even like, Oh man, he looks like a K-pop star. <laughs> I was like, yeah. God, hilarious. He's wearing like a weird trash bag this whole game. <laughs> Weird trash bag, unless you put him in another outfit. But um, I genuinely really like Jungi Han. Um, I liked him to begin with, even before playing the rest of the games. But after playing, well, after watching you play them and seeing the original Jungi Han in six, mm-hmm. and then seeing the contrast and like the buildup of how this Jungi Han came to exist, like it's so good. Yeah. And like him trying to figure out like how what is my identity since I'm I'm a copy and I'm not supposed to have an identity. Uh huh. Um, and he's also like you said, just a big weirdo. Like in general, the dude is a weirdo, and everybody's like, um, <laughs> bro, dude, what? <laughs> <laughs> but he, he meshes with like the rest of that party so well. He totally does. He totally does. Um, and um. He also has a good dynamic with the uh, song Weed, like a really mm-hmm. good dynamic. Yeah. Um, and I appreciated that quite a bit. Yeah. I mean, you you gotta love a man who runs around in a trash bag unironically. <laughs> it's true. You gotta love it. It's true. Um, so yeah, Jungi Han moves on. Yay! Good job, Jungi Han. You rock that trash bag, man. Uh up next we have Suyoshi Nagamo from Yakuza Six and Andre Richardson from Yakuza Three, who just is the guy who looks like Albert Wesker. And talks about the rough. The rough. The rough. 
Um, he's only in here just for that joke. That's it. Yeah, that's that's the only reason he's in here. And honestly, like, I had to go in Nagamo because he's a really good character. Yep. Like, genuinely, he's an actually good character. It's not just the rough joke. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have the florist from Yakuza 1 through 5 and Eri Kamataki from Yakuza 7. I went with the florist on this one. I also did. Um, I think the thing is, like, Aerie just she's a bonus character that doesn't yeah. really have a whole lot of actual characterization because she doesn't really she show up in any like main story critical cutscenes. She only gets characterization through the the business, and Oops. there's just not a whole lot there. She's good. I like her, but like the florist actually has some interesting story that goes along with him. Yeah. Uh, up next, we have Lao Ka Long from Yakuza 1, 3, and 7, and Ono Michio from Yakuza 6, Kawami 2, and 7. I picked Ono Michio. I did, too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Gotta He's go with so it. cool. He's so cool. His outfit? Fantastic. What a, what a dude. What a dude. He just wants to go fishing. He just wants to go fishing, man. It's true. Uh, up next, we have Shintaro Kazuma from Yakuza 0 through 2 and Reina from Yakuza 0 and 1. Who did I go with um, on this one? I went with Kazuma. I also went with Kazuma. Okay, that sounds very easy to me. <laughs> bingo, bingo. Bingo, bingo. Uh, penultimate matchup of the first round. We have Masayoshi Tanimura from Yakuza 4 and Goro Majima from all of those games. Um, obviously went with Majima on this yeah. one. Yeah. Like, I can't even joke. Like, Tanimura is probably my least favorite mainline protagonist in all of the games. He's he's easily my least favorite. He's just kind of boring. He's kind of boring. He's just kind of there and, like, you know, Shinada had like the dumb weirdo ness of him, and like he had his like fallen baseball star story that was actually pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Um, Timer was just kind of there. And he's a cop. And he's a cop. Blech. But yeah, no one's beaten Majima. <laughs> no one's beaten Majima there. Nope, nope, nope. Uh, nope. And then finally, we have Masahiro Chono from Yakuza Kiwami 2 <laughs> and Homare Nishitani from Yakuza 0. I wanted to include a wrestling uh, representation in this because I thought it would be very funny. Yep. And you even admitted when you did it, you're like, he's probably not going to get out of the first yeah. one. But... I went with Nishitani here just because Nishitani is only in Yakuza 0 for like a cup of coffee. Yeah. But like, man, does he make that time work. He makes it impact man he's good like if nothing else if if you don't think of anything else about this guy like him just coming into um the the club and being like all right cool let's fight like yep. well, dude what <laughs> like you're, you're trying to be a complete menace i love it mm-hmm. um and once again i mentioned it before like you see a very, very strong impact on who Majima becomes because of Nishitani, which is wild because, as you said, he's in there for, like, maybe at most, like, an hour. Yeah. Um, And, like, just a few scenes. But he is so important. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, shaping, like, Majima's destiny, I guess, if you want to put it in a dramatic way. <laughs> um, he's just a really weirdo. He's a weird character. I like him a lot. Yeah, hundred percent. Sorry, wrestler man. You were really funny in the scenes you were in, though. It's true. Uh, that brings us to the second round. Woohoo! We after did after an hour of podcasting. <laughs> it goes faster after this. It does. Um, we have Kashiwagi versus Kurosawa. Um, I went with Kashiwagi. I also went with Kashiwagi. So Kashiwagi, you go for it. Good job. Uh, we have Ai Uihara versus Psycho Bukuda. Um, as funny as it is, I went with Psycho on Same. this. Same. Sorry, I. Hey, she made it out of the first round. That's that's good enough for me. That is good enough for me, too. Like, I was proud of her. Shouts out Ai Uihara. <laughs> Woohoo! Uh, we have Yukio Terada versus Hana. Uh, I went with Hana. I also went with Hana. 
Hanu's Again, too like, good. Like, like we mentioned at the very beginning of this, uh, parts of our bracket are very similar. And it's very much this top part of this bracket is very similar for both mm-hmm. of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, hang on. Mark some stuff off there. Okay. We have Ryuji Goda versus Kazuma Kiryu. <laughs> uh, yeah, Kiryu's going forward. Yep. Sorry, Ryuji. Unfortunate matchup for you, buddy. Unfortunate matchup. Uh, we have Pocket Circuit Fighter versus Yuki. I went with Yuki. I also probably went with Yuki. Probably. I can't look right now. Okay, I'm looking. Yeah, I did. Yay. So we got that. We have Nick Ogata versus Haruka Sawamura. Uh, this one's easy. Yes. Haruka, good It's job. Nick. Wait, what? <laughs> no! <laughs> uh, we have Makoto Date versus Toro Hirose. Um, I know who I went with. I'm, I'm curious what you think. I feel like for this, the, I feel like it has to be Date. I am fine with going forward with Date. As much as BT Keshe is amazing. He's very amazing. And I made him go forward on mine, but, um, I, I think that Date is worthy and he should go forward. Yeah. Uh, we have Ricky, uh, Shimabukuro versus Joji Kazuma. I mean, I'm, I'm going to put down an argument here. Okay. Beautiful eyes. <laughs> <laughs> but no, Ricky I should go forward here. Ricky is going forward, yes. I just wanted to say it one last time. I, You know what? I appreciate it. Good job, buddy. Beautiful eyes. So funny. Uh, up next, we have Song Wee versus Ichiban. It's got to be Ichiban. Yeah. Uh, oops, I forgot to mark that off. We have Shun Akiyama versus Winhai Lee. Uh, Akiyama, easily. We have Makoto Makimura versus Yuya. I went with Makoto here. I also did as well, I believe. Yuya is a bro, but like I, I love that Makoto story so much. Yeah, 100%. I still think about it all the time. Uh, we have Daisaku Kuze versus Mr. Libido. <laughs> this one was genuinely hard for me. I won't even lie to you. It was hard. I went with Kuze. Yeah, I mean that's that's the that's the the choice to go with. I I felt like such a butthead taking Mr. Libido out like that. I know, but, I know. But again, a motorcycle in a sewer with a metal pipe. Come on. Real good. Real good. Uh, we have Masumi Arakawa versus Jungi Han. Um, I would go with Jungi Han, but I also really love him. Um, I think that Arakawa is also a solid choice here. Well, as someone who had this matchup in their bracket, mm-hmm. I will tell you what I went with. Please do. I went with Jungi Han. <laughs> Jungi Han, you go forward. Woohoo! So there's that. Uh, we have Suyoshi Nagamo versus The Florist. I went with Nagamo. Um, I just really enjoy yeah. that character. Yeah. And The Florist is like, he's good, but he's kind of like one note at a certain point. So. The longest lasting character played by a wrestler in the Yakuza series. Amazing. Which I guess we did have wrestler, wrestler representation with The Florist. I forgot. Well. It's he's fine. Not, he's not playing a wrestler, though. He's not playing a wrestler. He's playing a, an information dealer. Uh, we have Ono Michio versus Shintaro Kazuma. Um, I went with Kazuma just because of the characterization being very good, but... I went with um, Ono Michio. <laughs> I say we go with Ono Michio, then. If you want, we can go with Kazuma. That's fine, because I think that probably is the better option to choose here. However, it was very funny to, to choose Ono Michio. <laughs> Whoever it is is not going to get out of the next round. Anyway. No, 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 no. Um, um, So I'm fine with whatever. I, let's go with Cosmo on this one. All right. Shouts out to Ono Michio. Yeah, what a, what, a, what a dude. And then finally, the last matchup of the second round, we have the Yakuza 0 matchup of Majima versus Nishitani. I mean, obviously this one has like one answer and that's it. Nishitani. No, it's Majima! Majima! 
Oh, man. Uh, now we go to the third round. See, we're going faster now. We are going faster, it's true. Uh, we have Kashiwagi versus Saiko. Um, I went with Kashiwagi. I went with Saiko. <laughs> um, I think that I would concede on this one that Psycho is a good moving forward character. Okay. Because I, I love them both. Again, it is a this is another manner of whoever is moving forward is not making it past. Correct. But yeah, Psycho's cool. Psycho's so cool. Kashiwagi's so cool. cool as well, though. Yeah, I mean, like, shout out to that man for being on the keyboards. Of <laughs> uh, next, we have Hana versus Kiryu. <laughs> Sorry, Hana. You made it far. I'm proud of you. You you made it very far in your fantastic character, and please come back. True. True, and that's for true. Uh, up next, we have Yuki versus Haruka. It's, it's got to be Haruka. Obviously. Yeah. You're not wrong. <laughs> in mine, I had Yuki making it all the way to the next round. Oh, snap. But also, Haruko is long gone at that point, so... Right, right, right. I, I missed. I did the wrong one. Oh, no. Yep, that's gonna work. <laughs> oh, no. What did you do? I just had to hastily write it in again. Okay. Uh, up next, we have Date versus Rikia. Uh, I think Date goes for it on this one. Yeah. Oh, welcome to one of the hardest ones that I had in this entire freaking bracket. Yeah, this one's uh, not easy. This one's not easy. We oh, my God. Ichiban versus Akiyama. I sat there and struggled with this for, I won't even lie to you, like an hour <laughs> trying to debate with myself who goes for it. And I switched it like 10,000 times because they are both such good characters but they're mm -hmm. good in such different ways mm -hmm. um i mean as you said earlier like they both had the whole like new protagonist um thing to to live up to i think they both lived up to it so well mm -hmm. um akiyama is obviously the one of like the the four through five ones that um like he was obviously the best of the the newcomers yeah um He's so delightful. Like genuinely, I love Akiyama as a character. Like he's he's sassy. He's kind of dumb. Um, he's got that great dynamic with Hana, but he also has a really good dynamic with with Kiryu in general. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, I, I I like his whole like philosophy when it comes to like lending people money. Like I think that that was a really cool little bit with him. Um. You know, he's still got his, like, weird scummy moments because, like, he's got to have his weird scummy moments. <laughs> um, but I I did really, really love Akiyama. And um, so this one was just so hard for me to pick. Mm -hmm. And I think that either one of them deserves to go forward. Obviously, we can only pick one. Um, but both of these dudes if they were not going against each other, would make it very, very far for me. I, I completely agree with everything you just said. <laughs> Yay! Did you struggle as much as I did, or did you not make them go? You made you had the same matchup here. I did have the same matchup here. You were correct. Did, how, um, how, did you struggle? I don't remember. I probably okay. did, because this is a hard, it's hard choice to go with. It's very I, hard. Inevitably, I went with Akiyama. Do you have do you have a reason for that? Because I went with Ichiban. It's I think it's one of those things where there's no wrong answer here. I agree with you. It's just a matter of who you think just barely squeaks it out. out. Yeah, I think it was just the thing of Akiyama's in more games, and that's mm -hmm. that was the edge I gave. So we've had more time for him to. To really grow into himself. Mm -hmm. And just more time to like spend with that character compared to Ichiban. Yeah. 
Yeah, that's totally fair. And I mean, like I said, I think either of them, I'm totally happy with going forward because they're both so, so good. Mm -hmm. Um, Obviously, like, top tier protagonist here. Um, I will say as as a negative, um, Akiyama never takes off his shirt. Oh, he doesn't have a tattoo to show off. I know, but like, how rude of him. He's hiding money in that jacket. He can't take it off or else he'll go flying. <laughs> um, I, I also appreciate about him uh, that his, his photo when he sings is him as a bum. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, look at me as a homeless guy. It's like, <laughs> okay, sure. Like, what are you doing, buddy? Um, I, I, I would love to see him come back. Yeah, I, I agree. I would love to see him come back. And it was very, very sad um, that I was like, I, I just want to see him again. Please come back. And no, no, he didn't come back. Um, maybe one day. Maybe one day. I would love to see Akiyama back. Please, please bring him back with Hana. Agreed. They don't have to be playable. Just I just want them around. That's all I ask for. Mm-hmm. Um, I think we will go with Akiyama on this one. Okie dokie. Um, Ichiban, I love you. I can't wait for you to be in more games. Yes. It's all. And, and that locker scene, man. <laughs> Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, up next, we have Makoto versus Kusei. You would be maybe surprised on who I went with this. Who did you go with on this? Kuzey. I also went with Kuzey. All right, Kuzey, you go forward. I thought you would be shocked that I went with Kuzey. I am kind of surprised, yeah. Yeah, because you know how much I love Makoto. But, yo, Kuzey is real cool. <laughs> Kuzey is real cool, man. It's true. You got to fight that butthead so many times. Mm-hmm. Uh, up next, we have Jungi Han versus Nagamo. I just put Jungi Han forward because I love Jungi Han. I went with Nagamo. That's fair. Because I like Nagamo just has such a fun bro dynamic with Kiryu, he and really does. leading the rest of his the little the little gang because you know Beach Kashi is just sitting up there eating parfaits and stuff. <laughs> but um, he, he's really kind of like the glue that holds everyone together in that little family. Um, he's the glue guy. And. You know, when Kiryu shows up, he has this little tiff with him, but eventually, like, he kind of comes to an understanding with him, and then that helps him grow even more as a character throughout the rest of that game, and, you know, he has some really fun moments in that game, also some really, like, emotional moments. Um, it definitely does. Um, he, he changes diapers, he does some uh, some baby rugby. He does do some baby rugby. I mean, hey, baby rugby. Baby rugby. Need I say more? Yeah. All right. Now you're going to go forward. <laughs> How many times will Baby Rugby come up in this podcast? Who knows? I don't know if it actually will come up anymore. <laughs> yeah, well, because the next one's an easy guess. Or yeah. easy, not guess, uh, easy move forward. Uh, Maj- then we have Majima's going forward. Kazuma and Majima. And oh my gosh, it's Majima. Who's surprised? What, 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 what? Yoink, yoink. All right. And then there were eight. We have Psycho versus Kiryu. Congratulations, Kiryu. You're moving on. Yeah, good job, Kiryu. Woo! Psycho, you had a good run. You did have a good run. I'm proud of you. Uh, we have Haruka versus Date. I put Haruka forward. I don't. I didn't have this matchup, so. You didn't have Haruka. Well, I didn't have this matchup either. I had Haruka and Hirose, but I, I still moved Haruka forward. Who did I have? I had Yuki and Date. <laughs> 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 oh wow! Um, so I, I, moved, da- I moved Date forward. Yeah, I say Date went forward on yours. However, I yeah, I can. I think Haruka has to go forward here. Haruka, woo! Wow, that one's a a tough one, but we already know how that's going to end up. Uh, up next, we have Akiyama versus Kuze. Well, this was the end of my my Kuze run. Yeah, uh, I believe that was also the end of my Kuze run. <laughs> yeah, I was impressed how far Kuze went. He's real good. He's real good. You love to hate him. 
real good. But yeah, Akiyama has to go forward. Yeah. And then we have Nagamo versus Majima. Goodbye, baby rugby. Majima has to go forward. And then there were four. And then there were four. Four main characters. Mm-hmm. Unsurprisingly, make it to the final four. <laughs> Unsurprisingly. And I, I I really struggled, and I texted you this a bit. I was like, I feel like I'm really basic for picking this kind of bracket, but at the same time, like, it makes sense. Yeah, it's 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 it, it's it's inevitable. Yeah. And I was, um, I was ultimately happy with my, my choices anyway. So, I'll start from the bottom, because I think that's the easier one. Yeah. Akiyama and Majima. Yeah, I mean, like... It's Majima. It's Majima. It's got to be Majima. Majima! Like, Akiyama, we've already beat Gushed about him. He's so good, but, like, we're going to get into this whole Majima thing, because we're going to have a matchup here that we we really have to discuss. Yeah, Haruka's moving forward, obviously. Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, I love Haruka, as I mentioned earlier when I gushed about Haruka. Um, but she does not beat Kiryu. No. Which leaves us with two. It does. It and leaves us I with me- the two. The two. And as I mentioned um, earlier, like we were going to talk about these two um, more in depth. And I think that this is the point that it happens. Because so far, we've just been like, yeah, we're moving you forward. We're moving you forward. Mm-hmm. Um, this is a hell of a matchup. Um, because both of these characters are so good mm-hmm. in very different ways. Um, Kiryu, like he's been in all the games. Uh, Majima has been in all the games. Um, but Kiryu has a really, really fascinating arc, mm-hmm. and I I love the characterization of him because. You do initially get that whole idea of like, oh, he's like a, a, a stoic tough guy and that's all he's got. But he's not that. Like he he is that, um, but he's not just that. Yeah, that's not his complete his complete package. Um He's not a one note dude. Correct. And like when we started with Zero when we were doing our Yakuza playthroughs, obviously Kiryu and Majima were the two that we were playing as. And I got immensely attached to both of them immediately. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, and even in in Zero, the way that they navigate through their their stories is is completely different. Um, it it it's it's um it's wild. <laughs> <laughs> it's wild. Um, you know, curious having to fight Kuze like 10,000 times, <laughs> um, and deal with like the, the, the Yakuza fallout with him. The Majima is running a cabaret club. He's running a cabaret club, but he's like deep in depression and, um. Going to the video store. <laughs> hanging out with Mr. Libido. Mr. Libido's hanging out with him. Um, but he's, he's like extremely depressed because he's like stuck in this, like, Cage that he he's in and yeah. like wants out so badly um and the two of them are just like they are the foil really mm-hmm. um and seeing majima uh interact with makado is just fantastic seeing him interact with all the other folks that end up leading to his like mad dog persona um it's it's really really fascinating because i didn't know anything about majima really and like you would told me a bit about him so seeing how he gets to where he goes is really cool Mm -hmm. i will Um, say though that like you got the best way to experience that character correct by going through zero all the way up through seven and everything correct the original way that character though was brought up was he's in one through five then zero happens and Mm -hmm. then six and then seven obviously and i think that can differ how you per per 
perceive that character That's, because yes because i think he you know he's fine in one through five like he has a lot of fun moments and everything he's a very wild and rambunctious character but he doesn't get a lot of like the deep character you know or gets characterization i should say until mm-hmm. zero and where you yeah. really get like a deep dive into like who he was how he becomes who he does in the later games and everything mm-hmm. and then there's also i guess you could say the problem of with majima is that like five he's barely in he's barely in and even then like i i don't like what they did with him in five mm-hmm. um like i think that it's very strange to have him like go after a barely legal girl um i think it's strange for him to go after like an idol um i think it's it's plausible that he would do like a domestic abuse situation there it's plausible i could see it um it does it doesn't help as as well that with the characterization we know from zero now like it makes all that stuff even make less sense it makes less sense because yeah. you're like okay well like and at what point does this happen in this timeline and we know that like he he like for lack of a better word like carried that torch and then like kawami 2 really emphasized that again mm-hmm. so it feels like 5 is just so completely out of place it, it's probably I wonder if they if they had actually done like Kawami remakes of three through five, if they would have mm-hmm. just retconned that stuff. I mean, personally, if I were doing it, I would. Yeah. I would um, retcon that immediately. Because like it it doesn't it doesn't do anything. Mm-hmm. It just is a way to tie him in. Yeah. And that's it. And then six he's like there literally at the very beginning and then doesn't show up again <laughs> until yep. it, that's it. Yeah, that's it. So if there are, if you can put marks against Majima's characterization, his character throughout the game, it's, it's probably that stuff where, like, you know, some of the later games he just doesn't really have a big impact in, and then some of his characterization has kind of been shifted and altered due to Zero being a thing. Mm-hmm. But. And I will tell you, that's why I made the ultimate decision that I did. Yeah, I think I think that, yeah. I think that's fair. Like, Kiryu is a staying force through all of these games um even in the games like uh four and five where they split up the protagonists he's still a pretty prominent factor in all those even if he is not the playable character at that point Mm -hmm. like there are still things of like you know we know what he's doing or something of that nature or he's still a you know a factor in the story at some point um And, like, there's not a whole lot of his characterization that really, like, is altered or changed mm-hmm. throughout all of those, even with, like, the inclusion of Zero. Um, if anything, it helps him yes, throughout everything. Um, and he doesn't have, like, those same problems that Majima, unfortunately, does have where, you know, like, there's the weird stuff in 5 and then the stuff where he just kind of doesn't show up in those in 5 and 6 where Kiryu is, you know, just, like I said, the prominent force out of all these games and, you know, they get to six and write him off. They give him the send off that, you know, that character kind of desperately needed at that point. Yeah. Where, you know, you couldn't really do another game with him. And even like when he, they bring him back in seven for like, as just like, he's a guy with no name or whatever. Mm -hmm. I think they really handle that stuff well. And it's something that is able to give Ichiban like a little bit more room to breathe, room to breathe. And also some credits or some, some street cred that he's able to like get the little the pat on the back from Kiryu who like kind of is able to recognize him as like someone who can do stuff and like mm-hmm. it's basically literally them just doing the the, the torch passing they, in game yeah. essentially yeah it really is uh also just worth mentioning that it's it's really cool that in English dub of seven they got the original voice actor back yeah to Kiryu. like that's that's really cool touch yeah uh, and he actually like did a really good job in, in the dub um I think that the PS2 dub was just a directional issue. Oh yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that was the era when they were just like, everything has to be edgy. Yeah. And yeah. Michael Madsen's here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I I just I like that Kiryu. The people that he cares about, he cares about them so so much, mm-hmm. and um, like he he very obviously feels a lot for these people um 
And he's not afraid to show that he cares. Like I mentioned earlier with the Rikia part, like he just breaks down about this kid that he's like, you know, I didn't want this to happen to you. Like, this is what I was trying to avoid with like you and the Yakuza life. Um, and, you know, he kind of does the same thing with Haruka and that, you know, she, she wanted to do the whole idol thing. And he's like, well, I, I have to, I have to back off because like that's going to be a negative for you if they find out your like relationship with me mm-hmm. and um like he he does have the the self-sacrificing streak um which is, is rough um i'm gonna make a strange comparison okay uh, i hope you're ready for this um do you remember when we were talking about, I think it was four, when we, Trails of Cold Steel 4, maybe, when we were talking about how Reen was kind of like looking for a place to die? Yes. I think that Kiryu really is that by the end of his arc. Yeah, I mean, we talked about that in when we played through 2, that like that was very much a thing that he was trying to do with that, at that game. Yeah. Um, and... and Ultimately, he finds that ish, um, <laughs> big ish there. Yeah. Um, thanks, Date. <laughs> um, but he he becomes like he's tired. He's very obviously tired. Yeah. Um, and he's been dealing with this for most of his life at this point, if not his whole life because of his association his, with all of his adult life essentially B- well even before that because yeah. of the orphanage mm-hmm. bits um like he decides he wants to be part of the yakuza like when he's a teenager because of his surrogate dad yeah um and like this lifestyle has taken so much away from him like so many people that he cares about have been taken away because of this this organization um and it's it's heartbreaking in a way that he like can't be with the people that he does care about like it is very very upsetting that he can't just like i don't know retire and have a happy life where he gets to be a grandpa (laughs) um i hate that i hate it so much maybe someday he'll like get to do that without people bothering him um Probably not going to help that he is still wearing the same outfit. <laughs> uh, they're and like, hey! to the gills. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh god, who is that? Like, beefy grandpa. Um, <laughs> um, I hate that for him because he really does deserve like to just be able to chill out and like enjoy being around people he cares about. But at the same time, he's become such this like figure. That people are like, I guess for lack of a better word, like obsessed with. Yeah. Um, like he's this big part that everybody really relies on, and he 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 can't have that anymore because he's a legend. In yeah. Sense of the word. Yeah, he really is. And so, like, he he wants the people that he he cares about to have space away from that that legend and. Um, it's like one of the, the good things is, again, I'm sad that he can't actually go hang out with them, but like, you get to see him like looking over Haruka and, um, and, uh, why am I blanking on his name? Uh, Yuta with, with, um, Haruto mm-hmm. at the orphanage. And I'm like, oh, like he, he quote unquote died for that. Um, I, he's just so good. He's so good. Yeah. Also worth mentioning. He does have his really goofy moments. And a lot of that is tied to the side stories. And I understand that that can't, that may or may not be canonical. Um, But like, I'm thinking of him just like ridiculously answering the phone when he's doing like the, the like call dating thing. Uh, I'm thinking of the like stupid pecking when he's trying to talk to the cam girls. Um, 
I, the fact that he has a chicken helping him run a real estate business, uh, all of the karaoke, like his blogs, his blogs, right? I forgot about his blogs. Um, like he definitely has a like non-serious side that I I appreciate, and I think that that was like desperately needed. Yeah, hundred percent. Um, because. In this series, I think that, like, if we had had just the Kiryu that we get in the story, like, he's great. He would have been fantastic. But, like, I feel like getting a little bit more of his, like, non-Yakuza persona is really, really helpful to him. Mm -hmm. Um, Because it, I guess for lack of a better word, like, we needed the comic relief. Yeah, like, I think it's heavy. I think if you just had the main story stuff, like you would get burnt out on that character way way sooner than you would have normally if you didn't have all of the the comical stuff or just the weird silly stuff that the series brings to you scattered mm-hmm. in between all of that cuz like you said it does give you a good chance to kind of just breathe and not really have to deal with the 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 more heavy-handed stuff and also yeah. just shows you a different side of this character that you normally most likely wouldn't get in the the main story stuff where it's just him in these very ridiculous, over-the-top situations that he has to navigate through in his own particular way. I love that he's, like, canonically bad with technology. Yeah. I love that. I think it's great. And, like, can easily be scammed sometimes. Mm-hmm. Uh, like, I, I, I think that that's fun. I really do. And I appreciate that a lot about him. Also, um, Machine Gun Kiss art absolute art um also art is when you karaoke with haruka and he's one cheering her on and two doing the (laughs) weird like pilot like landing hand moves that i don't know what the heck that is but he's 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 such a proud dad yeah and i love that aspect of him and that he is such a proud dad um like he just kind of like accidentally becomes a, a, a dad basically i know that she calls him like uncle but he's he's her dad um like whoops I actually got a child all right let's figure out how to do this um like i love that i think it's great um please don't take her to the women in the cages <laughs> even though she keeps begging you to take her to the women in the cages don't do that please don't do that oh god <laughs> <laughs> oh man or she's gonna lie to Akiyama in a few games that she's never had crab after we take her to the it's a lie it's a restaurant. lie it's a lie um but yeah like that those sides of him are just so good and so like we have the serious side we have the dramatic side we have the goofy side like Kiryu ultimately is just such a well written character and like when when I got to this, I was like, oh, this is going to be hard. And then I was thinking about it. I'm like, no, actually, it's not hard. Yeah, that was kind of my mindset going into this as well. Like, as lo- as much as I love Majima, and you know I love Majima, um, I was like, you know, he's just got a lull of, like, characterization and a lull of, like, good representation in the games. Mm-hmm. Um. And Kiryu doesn't have that. He's consistently so good. Yeah. I love him. Well. So yeah, I picked Kiryu. I, yeah, same. So, so did I. <laughs> and, and I. And I think that our, our bracket will also pick Kiryu. So we I, both I, I've win this time. It, so yeah. We both win the bracket this time. Yay. Yay. Hey. How about us? I mean, I think going into this, we both kind of knew this would be where this would end up. Yeah. Which isn't a bad thing, of course, but it is one of those things that's like you have these two big forces, which bless the rando for putting them in opposite ends of the bracket so we did not have to do this beforehand. Yeah, no kidding. Like Thank I think you, rando. I think this is the perfect final matchup. I agree. So, yeah. I really do. Imagine like, if that had been a first round match. Oh, that would have been brutal. Um, I don't, I don't know how that would have. 
Ugh. Anyway. Not um, fun. Not fun. Not fun. But, um, yeah, anyway, I love Kiryu. He's a good dude. He's a good dude. He's a good egg. Good egg. But, yeah, there's... That is our champion of Yakuza March Madness. And the champion of our bracket. I think this is the first time we both won it. <laughs> yeah, we've both had the same winner coming out of it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Makes sense. Uh, but, yeah, Probably that was fun. Was. It was definitely fun. I enjoyed this quite a bit. I enjoyed putting together the, the list of characters. I enjoyed mm -hmm. us, like, having to make our cuts of characters which was hard mm -hmm. um but but enjoyable yes um i like that we got to put some some goofy choices on there and you know they had some great representation in there but i think that this is the the best choice and um i i i can't believe how invested i am in yakuza now i cannot believe it's real good. It's real good. It's real, real, real good. Like, I, I'm so, so invested at this point, and I never would have said that, like, two years ago. Or even, like, I don't know, a year and a half ago? Yeah, that makes sense. I started playing Yakuza. It was, it was with Seven. And it I was think with Seven. The start, of the start of last year is when we started Zero. Yeah. Got through all of those, uh, got through all those games. Man. Good times. And now I'm like, yay, we get Lost Judgment DLC. Woo! Yeah. I'm just I'm 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 too I'm in too deep now, man. I have a Majima construction poster in my office upstairs. <laughs> I have I have my Friday night earrings now. I've got my, my Majima cabaret shirt. Like I'm 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 in too deep. I got you that sweet Daigo sticker. I've got the art that you gave me. Mm -hmm. I think that's Judgment, though, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, still. Tangential. Um. Anyway. Good job, Kiryu. Woo! Yes, good job, Kiryu. Indeed. I think that's going to do it for this episode. Yeah, you guys should fill out the bracket if you want to fill out your yes. bracket. Yes. Who will your top Yakuza dude be, and why will it also be Kiryu? <laughs> why will it also be Kiryu? But along the way, there might be differences. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, that's going to do it for us this week. If you'd like more from us, head on over to SeasonalAnimeCheckup.com or SAC.cool, where you can find past episodes of this podcast and other podcasts like Jared Now Watch. You can also find columns and reviews on the site as well. If you'd like more from Anladium, go to Anladium.com. She's got columns and reviews. You can follow us on Twitter and TikTok at Anime Checkup. You can buy our books, One Shiny Moment of Critical Analysis of Love, Life, Sunshine, and Hot Tubs and Pac-Man on Amazon.com. And you can support us on Patreon, patreon.com slash S-A-C-O-V-A. Buy us a slice of pizza, get access to unedited versions of the podcast early, and a whole wealth of bonus content as well. Next week. <laughs> chaos. Next week. We got to talk about some chaos. 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 Woo. Yes. Uh, yeah. Strangers of Paradise. Final Fantasy Origins. Next week. Yep. Yep. Look forward to that, guys. We, we've got a lot to talk about. 